Josephine Withers, and I'm talking to you from Oakland, California, where I've lived for the last four and a half years. I'm one of the founders of the Washington Women's Art Center, but before I even get to the Washington Women's Art Center, I wanted to talk a little bit about the National Conference of Women in the Visual Arts. In my mind, they're all tied together. The National Conference of Women in the Visual Arts happened in April of 1972. I was a part of one of six in the steering committee that created this independently, although we had it housed at the Corcoran Gallery. For me, coming straight out of graduate school, where I had to toe the line and just behave, this was finally a waking up time. And all of us agreed that we were doing this conference, not because anybody told us to, but because we wanted to. And it was our initiative and our finagling and our cleverness and our creativity that brought about this gathering from across the country of women in the visual arts, artists, curators, museum people, uh, and art historians like myself. And coming out of the National Conference of Women in the Visual Arts, which brought together stars like Miriam Shapiro and Judy Chicago, the first time that they had come out of California and were able to take their uh, work and their message to a larger national audience. Following the conference, we sat down and said, next steps. I mean, we're not just going to leave it at this one event. We've really got to organize and have some kind of an ongoing presence in Washington, D.C., and so that was the impetus for the creating the Washington Women's Art Center. One of my first involvements in the Washington Women's Art Center was helping to find the space for it. We had we found a wonderful space on Q Street, right near DuPont Circle, very central location. And my part in that was that the building that we rented from belonged to my family. And the, uh, the English basement uh, series of rooms that we took over as the center belonged to a doctor who had all of his offices there. He was deceased and was with great glee and enthusiasm that uh, teams of us cleaned out this former office and gradually created our own space, uh, which became a gallery, uh, an office where we had seminars and other kinds of lecture opportunities as well as gallery space for curated shows. You'll hear from others who participated in the founding of the Washington Women's Art Center of the myriad activities that we had there. As I remember now, what I did was uh, giving a uh, ongoing series of lectures and workshops on uh, women artists, and also helping with the curatorial aspect of the exhibitions. We had many uh, uh, open as well as curated and juried uh, exhibitions during the time at the uh, Washington Women's Art Center. When I became involved with the organizing of the National Conference of Women in the Visual Arts and then the Washington Women's Art Center, I had only recently come to the Washington area. I was appointed as a assistant professor of art history at the University of Maryland and also the assistant director of the art gallery there in 1970. I can't really overstate the impact that my involvement with the Washington Women's Art Center had on my own art history career. When I first came to the University of Maryland in 1970, there was no support whatsoever for women artists, let alone feminist artists. And so my 
involvement at the Washington Women's Art Center, the courses that I gave there on women artists, really served as an incubation period for me to really get my feet, my feminist feet underneath me. So it was only in, after 1976 that I began slowly to incorporate women artists into the curriculum at the University of Maryland. And one of the kickstarters for me was the arrival of Carol Pearson at the University of Maryland. She was the first full-time director of the Women's Studies program. And of course, she was an enormous support for the work that I was doing in the uh, the art history department. And ultimately, of course, I became affiliated with the uh, Women's Studies program. And in fact, I uh, was the interim director for a couple of years in the early uh, 1980s, sort of on loan from the art history department. It was only in the early 1980s that I was able to get approval for a permanent course on women artists. And guess what? That only happened after I finally got tenure, a, a contested tenure, I might say, in 1980. And so I really have the Washington Women's Art Center to thank for giving me the opportunity and the place to get my feet underneath me and to get started on what became a full-fledged career as a feminist art historian. Mind you, I'm of a generation where we had to create it all ourselves. This was not a, any kind of learning that we received in our education or in graduate school. We had to source it ourselves. And for a long time, that was before the internet made it so easy to uh, get information, put, put things together.